Holly and um, I'm beginning my recovery from um, anorexia nervosa. So at the moment, um, we're all on lockdown in the UK, we're going through the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and so a lot of facilities um, for treating eating disorders, a lot of mental health facilities are being closed down or they're all making sure that they're looking after the emergency patients. I actually had a phone call from my dietitian yesterday and I've been waiting for months to receive um, tier three services. So I had a psychiatrist, a dietitian um, and a psychotherapist. I was waiting to go and start CBTE, um, which is gold standard for eating disorders. So I was meant to start CBTE and sort of really intensive therapy sessions, so twice weekly sessions um, and I think it was 40 sessions altogether. Um, I would have the input from the psychiatrist, uh, dietetic input as well and I was due to start that um, but with everything that's going on um, they're not able to provide those services at the moment. Um, which sort of, in light of everything that's happening, it's, I can understand, but it kind of sucks because I was waiting so long for this treatment and um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty gutted. Um, and essentially what the dietitian said was, I'm gonna just have to do this alone. Um, I know it's, you know, with everything that's going on, I totally get it. Like, people are losing their lives. Like, you know, my problems don't seem that significant at the moment. And, but the fact that I've been waiting for this for years, like, I am pretty gutted. I'm now gonna be having to recover from home um, without that support. Um, she recommended that I look on Beat, um, which is, the online platform in the UK here to support eating disorders, it's a charity. Um, use self-help books um, and yeah, it's not ideal, not gonna lie, pretty gutted. I've written out five tips which for anyone who's having to recover during this time um, without the support, because I know there's so many people out there right now who have been told by their team that they're probably not going to see them for a while um, and possibly been discharged like I have um, and so I've been putting off recovery for so long I was waiting until I'd started this treatment um, and now that's not going to be happening you know the eating disorder was telling me you need to put it off you know, until you do get that treatment, but I don't know how long that's gonna be and I've already put this off for years and that's what the eating disorder wants. It wants you to keep on extending the goalpost. Um, it always moves it, you know, it's never the same. I can't keep wasting my time in this shitty eating disorder because it's fucking shit. Um, so I've written out some tips um, which I'm going to be doing. Number one is write lists or a diary every day of how you're feeling, you know, before you have breakfast, how you're feeling that day, are you nervous, are you anxious, are you um, feeling down, are you even excited for the day, are you ready to tackle the eating disorder, are you ready to take on those challenges, are you ready to spread that butter on that bread because butter right now is a freaking nightmare of a challenge to try and even face for me right now um and yeah just get your feelings out after every single meal or even before every single meal just write out how you're feeling before the meal are you feeling anxious after the meal you know sit with that feeling of feeling shit and write about it um i think not been doing consistently anyway. I start doing it and then I'm just like, oh, fuck this shit, this is just pointless. But it's actually really, really helpful. Um, so write lists, write a diary. Um, I'm trying to do that every day. Number two is have a meal plan. Um, luckily, I saw the dietitian 
before all of this happened and so I do have a meal plan from her but I also know that in a couple of weeks that meal plan is going to be needing adjusting, it's going to be needing increasing probably because initially my weight is going to go up but that it will eventually end up plateauing and so I need to be able to increase it but without dietetic input which yeah that's going to be another battle to face um, but have a meal plan get the support from your boyfriend your husband and um, your girlfriend your mum your dad you know anyone who doesn't have a disordered relationship with food so they can uh, help write a meal plan for you you know they obviously know what a, a good structured day looks like of eating so get that input and just write it down um, and also try and be realistic because sometimes before for starting you want to be able to change everything and you want to be able to have that breakfast, have that snack, have that lunch with the pudding and then maybe an aperitif after and it's just like you have to be realistic as well because when it comes to it it's just going to be harder to stick to it so it's better to just make small changes which you know you're going to stick to rather than just like putting everything on the meal plan and coming to it you're just like fuck, like, I can't do this, so you're just going to run a million miles. Um, so yeah, realistic meal plan, put it on the fridge, um, and just make sure you look at it every day, or, you know, make sure you know what you're having every day, so when it comes to it, you're just like, nah, this is what I'm having, not going to have any less. Um, you stick to that plan, try not to deviate from that plan, and yeah, if needs be, revisit it, see if you need to increase, if, you know, never decrease, you can never decrease the meal plan with an eating disorder, it's all, only the increases you'll be seeing. Um, so yeah, clear meal plan. Number three is, okay, this is slightly controversial, but bear with me. So I spoke to my dietitian, and it was actually her that suggested this, not me, to weigh weekly, which is, uh, yeah, that one is hard. Um, so I do have scales here, but I don't weigh myself regularly, if anything, being too scared to step on those scales. Um, she recommended that I weigh weekly, and as soon as I have weighed, to just put those scales away and t to try and forget about it, which is fucking hard. Um, but when you don't have a therapist who is going to weigh weekly, this seems to be the only other option. Um, it's such a weird time because you're literally having to do the work of a therapist, a dietitian, by yourself. And if anything, we'd be the worst people to do it for ourselves because Eddie just, that's not what the eating disorder wants. The eating disorder wants to do its own thing. And to have to take on those roles as well as Eddie is just... Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be challenging. Not gonna lie. So she said first thing in the morning, um, the same day every week, and to make sure that you tell someone that you love. Um, so I'm gonna be messaging my boyfriend. Um, I said that as soon as I weigh, I will give him a ring, and sort of rationalise those thoughts in my head um, of how I'm feeling. If it's going to be a weight gain, I am going to be feeling shit. So having someone to talk through that with, you know, is going to be beneficial. Also recommended to put it on a chart as well. So if you've got graph paper, fab. If you don't, just like draw your own graph, if you can. Um, or do it on Excel. Could you do it on Excel? Probably. Do it on a spreadsheet. Basically, every week, put on a graph your weight, look at the overall weight. So not look at each individual week because from day to day, even week to week, you know, you are going to expect to see small, small changes. But a lot of those changes is going to be water weight. Make sure you look at an overall trend and to look at the bigger picture as well. Like in recovery, you fear so much about gaining weight but ultimately that's what you need to do because like you're never going to recover if you don't gain weight sorry to break your bubble but that's just fact just make sure to look at the bigger picture so that graph that line is going to go up like 
that's just that's just the story of it. It's gonna go up if you want to recover and just accept that, you know, and sometimes having a goal of weight as well, which I know sounds a bit weird, especially in recovery, but having something to look forward to um, instead of dreading. Um, so looking at that weight and accepting that weight and seeing it as a number of health and capabilities and functionality, seeing it as more than just a number and sometimes it's easier to get to it then. Um, yeah. Fourth one is, which is quite difficult now because we're in lockdown, but the government have said that we are able to have at least one form of exercise a day. Um, and yeah, bear with me on that because exercise, that's another thing with eating disorders. We'll talk about that another time. But I do really recommend to just go out for some fresh air um, to try and switch off from the thoughts because sometimes staying inside when you know the fridge is you know a few meters away and you're counting down the hours until your next snack and you're in this confined space with so many family members and emotions are running high and I think it's so important to just get out um, and to try and forget about the meal plan the weekly weigh-ins the numbers the time um, and yeah, I think fresh air is a big one. Number five is um, a self-help book. So I can't remember the name of it. I'll go and get the book. Am I doing okay? Yeah. Thanks, Bibs. Okay, so this is the book. Um, it's called Overcoming Binge Eating and it's by Dr. Christopher Fabern. Um, so he talks He's a psychiatrist and he specializes in eating disorders. The therapy that I was supposed to receive was um, cognitive behavioral therapy enhanced, so CBTE. Um, and it's not just designed for anorexia, it's also for bulimia, binge eating and atypical eating disorders. So basically a step-by-step -step guide. If you were to do it by yourself, I think everything is in this book that you need. Um, so I've started reading it and it is really, really good. It's really, really informative. Um, you know, so it may be worth, maybe worth investing in this book. Um, I think I bought it for about £10. I just wanted to say as well that I know this is a shitty time and especially for people who are recovering and who are really struggling with the changing routine. We're so used to having control over what we eat, over how much we weigh, over how loose our clothes feel, and to all of a sudden being told that we're only allowed to go out a certain amount of times a day, we're only allowed to go to the shops a certain amount of times a week, and it's, it's really hard. So I hope you're all doing okay, and I hope you're all safe. And if this time has taught me anything, it's to just take care of ourselves? Why do we strive for skin and bones when, you know, there's health to be had? And yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, I love you all and I know it sounds so cliche, but we are all in this together and I never believe that, I've never believed that I've been able to fully recover. I've always thought that I've had it for too long. I'm a lost cause. Um, what's the point in starting now? But what is a life with an eating disorder? It's just, there's no life with an eating disorder. So it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna feel shit, but just, just keep going. Just keep going, you guys. I'm with you, I'm doing this. So I send my love to you all. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and just keep fighting. Just more steps. Okay, bye.